Welcome back, anglers. I'm Survival Vis, and we return to Ultimate Fishing Simulator for a second weekend of covering the game. I do have to do a little bit of business beforehand, and address a couple of things, which one is a mistake on my part, one is something I'd like to see in the comments going forward, but we'll start with the mistake on my part. So, when we went over like all the fishing locations, one of the things I forgot to bring up or didn't think of like looking harder into is all of the areas listed that are actually DLC that you have to buy to access. So I got a little list made up of all the ones that are DLC, and we gotta just slowly go through, so where is the first one? It actually looks like we get a fair amount of, yeah, there's a fair amount of base game locations, so it's not until, okay, oh, actually maybe I was mistaken, okay, yeah, so that's a DLC one. That's a DLC, that's DLC. Maybe I just flipped through these so quickly because I didn't realize that they actually like come listed as like DLC right here for you to see. Maybe it was a recent change that was done to make it more apparent they are or not. But yeah, as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well actually, hang on a minute, because I, most likely Marine Lake is that, so let me count that again. Okay, so there's one. Those are two part of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, so there's about seven DLC locations right now. There's actually another one I think listed on Steam to be coming out soon, which is like Florida for a couple of spots. There are some other DLCs like uh, an Aquariums DLC, so any of your catches I guess you can keep and put into Aquariums and have like a little gallery of sorts as well as a VR mode you can actually pick up for the game. The locations start, well, for me being Canada, the price for the game is I think like $25, and the DLCs are $6.50 each, so probably, I guess like about $5 US, five pounds. So I'm not sure if they're worth it that much in comparison, like they do at least offer a fair variety of species when it comes to like what you can see to the left there. I mean, some are carried over from other locations or that, so it's one of those things you have to argue if it would be worth it or not. But yeah, we're going... That was just one of the things I wanted to address and bring forward, so that way I wasn't misleading you guys. I try to be as honest and forward as I can with stuff. And with that order of business out of the way, the other thing I want to talk about, and we'll just let this start loading, is I've gotten a lot of comments starting to come in about like, oh, Russian Fishing 4 is better. But none of the comments say why Rushing Fishing 4 is better to people's minds. That's kind of like an empty argument if you don't at least give one reason for it. Like, is Russian Fishing 4 better because of the graphics, in your opinion? Is it better because of the, like, gameplay of actually getting a fish on? Is it better because of the multitude of, like, I don't, I guess you could call it multitude of systems. Like, there's fishing, cooking, cleaning, etc. Like, that lure making. Is that what makes it better? Like... I have no problem if comments do come in saying like one is better than the other, but it's an empty argument if you don't provide at least one reason why it's better. So that's something I like to see in the comments, and just to see where the opinion is on what parts of the games are better or worse than others. So that way we can kind of see like, okay, where does everybody stand with how they think of stuff? But if nobody provides the reasons, it doesn't really do anything. It's just like an empty thing. It's like, oh, that's better. That's the end of it. There's no reason why. And anybody could shoot you down because they could say, well, it's not because this. You gotta at least provide a little bit of backing to why something is better or that. It just gives it a little bit more foundation to make for that point. So that's just something I'd like to see possibly in the comments instead of just all these, or just a few of, this is better, but there's no reasons given or provided as to why it's better. I don't want to compare the two games just yet because I don't have enough uh, hours in Ultimate Fishing Simulator yet to really compare them that well. I'm not going to wait till it's like the 20 hour mark in order to do so that like I have equal time between the two, but I want to at least have a few hours in Ultimate Fishing Simulator to try to go further along, feel it out a bit more, and then comment from there how it is. Oh, that was a little bit of a limp wrist cast. So yeah, that's just kind of the stance on things right now. Reception's been pretty okay for switching over from RF4. I have had a number of comments coming in where it's like, I left Russian Fishing 4 too early. And it's like, I've got over 20 hours into the game. We've gotten over 60 episodes of a series on it. It's one of the ones where it's... 
is kind of feels almost like a sunk cost fallacy. Like you have to invest so much either time or money into it that you almost have to try to argue it's been worth it. At least from what my experience has been with it so far. Again, I still want to provide more time with Ultimate Fishing Simulator to see how it goes or that. But it's one of those ones where... I feel like there has to be a little bit more reasoning and explanations given for, like, why one's worse than the other. Like, there are some points already I've come across where I would say Russian Fishing 4 has improvements over this game. Graphics for one, the various models for the fish are another. Uh, there is the fact that you can, well eventually make your own lures or uh, crafting ground base or stuff like that. There's a little more complexity and involvement there. But yeah, I just want to try to get a little bit more of the reasoning and the points and stuff in place for what is better and what's worse. Just that way there's a little bit more for people to kind of comparatively... or sorry, objectively compare back and forth with. So we're just going to keep doing with this. I'm still aiming to try to get up to level 5 today to try to get the landing net. So if I do get any really large fish on, we can actually catch them, bring them in. And just honestly keep playing the game for a while. I still really do like aspects of it, like the bait view here. I know it's not realistic, but... It's one of the things where I think a game allows for a little bit more uh, enjoyment... Being able to break a bit of reality and having some other options open for yourself. Like, one thing I should try doing is switching more to, uh, not the under- Oh, okay, we actually hit level 5. Okay, we'll sell that. And now I want to go into... There we go, escape. Yeah, because I need to go down to the other. Um... No, not lures. I was just looking for other... other. Yeah, there we go. We can buy the fishing net. So that should hopefully help us out for any of the larger things we start catching. Uh, we've got float weights. So I don't think I want to change anything there yet, but yeah, there's ground baits, rod pods. There's a variety of stuff still to eventually get into with this game. I was... I do admit I am pleasantly surprised at how much uh, Ultimate Fishing Simulator does have to offer. Because I think one of the things about uh, Steam and the simulator titles is they can be very, well, very varied in how much quality there actually is to the game. Because you can have games that are really good for simulating stuff, like, say, I think the Euro Truck Simulator or the Truck Simulator ones are really good at it. And then you can have other ones like Hand Simulator or Goat Simulator or... Like, really weird ones that, as much as they're called a simulator, they don't feel as much as they really should be. But yeah, so I want to give at least a few more weekends, try and get more hours of time in with uh, Ultimate Fishing Simulator, get a little bit more into some of the other types of fishing, try it out, see maybe a couple locations... Oh! I really should have been paying more attention, that's the problem with talking and going about... <laughs> But give it a chance to show what it has on offer and what it's like before going too early. The first impressions have been pretty positive with it to me. I do... Again, it's just I'm curious to see where it is that people have, like, this is... What parts are better and what parts are worse comparatively. I still have a lot to learn when it comes to, like, actually fighting the fish when they do bite. There is some techniques I've been using that have been working, but I don't know if they're really the best or smartest techniques to use. Let me just see if I can bring it in. Now, I, I do like how you have a variety of views for, like, anything you're trying to catch, though. Like, if you want to follow the fish exactly with the fight on, you have the more game gamey feel of having the underwater camera and going through like that. Or if you want to have above water fully on the rod and what's going on, there's that option as well. We'll sell that off. And you know what? Yeah, maybe I'll switch to the spinning uh, one for a while. 
Ah, uh, just see what we can get there. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's... Okay, right, it's R and F that speed up and decrease that. Uh, we'll, we'll try maybe one more cast where we are here, and then I'll try moving down a little bit along the lake. It is kind of nice for when you do have the location selection. It does show you all of the different species that an area does have to it for possible catches. So everything here, species-wise, I think is a trout of some kind. Well, we'll just keep slowly trying to reel it in. In fact, maybe I'll... Yeah, I'll lower the reel speed a little bit, just... Oh! There we go, I didn't even realize something was actually on. You know what, I'm going to increase the uh, reeling speed a little bit back to normal just to bring it in. Yeah, it's nothing too big. There we go. That's another rainbow trout. We'll sell that off for a little bit. And I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk down. Like, yeah, there's nothing like an overhead, or there's no map to see the full lake area, know the depths of that you're fishing in. So that is one thing about... Well, at least for this first map. I don't know if it'll change as we do go through some of the others, but you don't really get an idea of what the full uh, lake geometry is or the lake topography. You know, like, if there are certain deeper spots, there are shallower spots, what kind of have you for that. So the areas are a little bit less detailed. Well, maybe a lot less detailed than Russian Fishing 4. So at least there's objective that, again, I can kind of talk about one way or the other for... Uh, something that's different or changed to me for them. I think we'll stick around here. Maybe try and see about getting to, like, say, level 7. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Come on in, you. I think he mostly tired itself out. I do want to try and see... I don't know how lucky I'll be able to get with the... Trying to practice the landing net, because that's actually something I'm surprised. Um, eventually, maybe Russian Fishing 4 did get into, and you'd have landing nets you have to try working with. Ooh, new record. Okay, so that's a decent-sized brown trout, 6.67 kilograms. But we'll put you back in the water, and yeah, maybe we'll try to go up to level 6, and then maybe try previewing the next area we can try fishing at. Just so we're able to get a good variety of species to try going for, too. Cast that way out. And we'll just change view. And don't let me... yeah, we'll just let that sink for a little bit. I do like you can actually... it follows it all the way down, which is a nice little touch, too, for... And let's just start bringing it in and see if anything goes for it. But eventually, I do want to also try to uh, test out how the feeding rods work or that kind of fishing. Because so far, we've actually covered two out of three fishing styles that I was able to tackle in Russian Fishing 4. So I want to see how the other one that the bottom fishing stacks up. Oh, nothing side go for it this try around. No problem, though. We'll just bring that in, and then we can try again. Yeah, there we go. And we'll try for that rock way out there. I doubt we're really going to hit it, but... You never know. But so far with the float fishing and the spin fishing... It does feel like Russian Fishing 4 is a little more consistent for when you do get a fish on, you kind of understand how to fight back against it in some ways. The float fishing, to be honest, because the rods never had any of the like actual reel to them, I don't think it really is something you could say like one way or the other. At least I lean to the float fishing. Ultimate Fishing Simulator is a bit better because you do have the reels you're working with right away. 
Yeah, nice to get you on right towards the end there. Now let's see if we can bring it in. It's given up a good fight. I'm going to increase the real speed a little bit more just to help us with the retrieval. Come on in. There we go. Let's see. Oh, no. Actually, even bigger trout this time around. Okay, we'll sell that for a good amount. And yeah, I do like seeing the money coming in pretty easily because... One habit that I do like for uh, Ultimate Fishing Simulator is as you're leveling up, there are gear, or there is gear that is level locked. So you kind of have an idea of what your progression is to what you should be looking at for your gear. Russian Fishing 4 is just almost too much information all thrown at you in the shop with how much there is to go through and sort through. Like when we tech at the shop and we go for, like, say, rods here, they are divided to your spinning casting feeder. And then if you do look here, the only information you really have is the durability to it. But you can at least use that to go easily between, like, the raws, the reels, and etc. there. Whereas, I think it was mostly Call of the Wild, the angler was a little bit bad for trying to cross-match a little bit. And then Russian Fishing 4 could also be one that would be difficult to get all the information kind of sorted in place for yourself, too. It feels like this is the... Simplest of the ones where it's just, okay, I want to look at a new spinning rod. Uh, there's this. It says it has this durability of 4.5. Okay, so that means if I want to go for a reel, I want to make sure it's not above the 4.5 of the rod. Stuff like that feels a little bit simpler to put together or eyeball just the store. And you know what, this time maybe we'll... Eh, we'll stay on the surface here, because there is also the raw direction of how you're holding it can affect uh, what you're fighting once something does strike two. Well, let's see if we can bring that in if anything does hit for it. But where I'd probably say for Russian Fishing 4, if you want to get anything out of it, you have to be prepared to invest... Invest, e well, either and or time and money. Because you either have to go for premium to unlock, like, some of the extra bonus experience or that, so that way you're making progress through, or you're going to have to invest a lot of time to go through and get through with it. And now some people are, will probably argue, playing, you don't have to put that much time into it. But you're also having to think about the time you spend researching to play, too. Because that's one of the things that kept coming up a lot when it came to covering Russian Fishing 4 is there's this video about the hotspots, there's this guide about this, there's this about this. There's so much outside stuff to be researching that it's not really you playing the game, but you're still spending time on the game itself. And that's kind of one of the things that I disliked when it came to Russian Fishing 4 is... So much of it seems like it's out of source to like learn in that for the game that you're not really playing. You're researching to play the game. And if you... I think that's something more if you would get further into the game and feel really drawn to wanting to go forward for. It's not a bad thing that there are resources to be trying to hunt and work with for it. But with how early on it feels like you almost have to do such or are really pressured to do such, I think it takes away a little bit of the... Uh, draw the game you want the game to have early on, so that way the players are hooked or drawn to keep playing more. Okay, we got a big fish on the line, actually. The only thing we'll be trying to... Okay, we might be able to actually bring this one in. Yeah, this one's taking its time, so we're probably going to have to use the landing net here, and I hope I remember the controls for that. Because you have to work again, from the tutorial I remember reading, we have to work getting the angle right and position proper of it to really uh, 
get the most out of it. Oh. Okay, come on in you. Oh yeah, this is a looks like a pretty fair sized fish there. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm glad this that's a nice thing too, is that these tutorials are popping up again as they're happening in gameplay wise, so I'm getting information as I need it too. In order to pull out bigger fish, you'll have to use a landing net, bring under the fish using WASD, and then grab by pressing R slash F. Uh Fishing nets handle color indicate the proper position. Make it fast so the can't escape. I think that was it. Yeah, so if it's red, it's not good to actually like catch the fish and bring it in. But if it's silver, you should be alright. So this was our biggest one so far. Uh, 10.34 kilograms, so pretty decent sized haul for it. We can sell you... We'll probably sell it off for a fair bit just because we do want to keep saving the money up. And that might have actually pushed up, pushed us up to level 6. So let me just check... Yeah, we did hit level 6 with that. Okay, so... Uh, there is the feeder rod. Let's see, they do have level 1. The only thing is, I don't think... I don't know if a feeder rod really worked that well for here. Because feeder rod, I think, is usually more for bottom feeders. Like carp and stuff like that. It might not hurt to pick up, though, to... Uh, see. I just want to see the pricing. Because it does go up a little bit each time. Yeah, you know, like, if we want to go for level 5, it would be about 500 for us. So maybe we'll start with something like, say... I mean, we'll start with this. So it's a feeder that has 10.3 durability. So I'm prob oh, probably want casting. 6.8. Um, yeah, see, that's one thing I'm noticing is the gear... We are definitely having it hit the money, but it's definitely nowhere near the grind that Russian Fishing 4 can be for trying to get new stuff. Uh, it is a fair jump. You know what? I'm going to go for that. Yeah, we're basically out of money there. That can handle 6.8, though, and line capacity of 120. So if I look for lines... Durability is 2.17. Yeah, so everything is kind of out of the price range right now, so we'll just worry about doing a little bit more fishing here. Try to catch a few more species, see if I can get any more really big ones like that. I kind of doubt it. Oh, actually, we'll just spend maybe one more retrieval in, because I didn't realize time went by as quickly as it did. That's a good sign of a good fishing game, is you lose track of time playing it, though, in my opinion. Because if it's a game that you feel your time is slowly going along with it... It's not... it's one... it's basically time flies when you're having fun, probably the way I'd put it. So if you do have a game where you do lose track of time a bit, just the little bit you're playing, you don't realize how much it's gone. I think it's a good sign of you're you're having a good time with it. You're engaged with it. Yeah. You know, what I'll probably do is maybe we'll try to spend this weekend on this map, save up all the money we've got. And then next weekend, we can already head to another area, see what else we can try going for. Because I think the next license... I think it was $100, it said, for the next area to go to. Which actually isn't too bad in the grand scheme of, like, the funds or that. Because, as we've been seeing, each fish we've been catching... It ranges from about, I'd say, $50 as a minimum to... I'm trying to remember what the last one was, that really big one we just caught. I think it's like 140 something. Either way, funds aren't too hard to get into the game. So it's not doesn't feel like too bad of a grind trying to go along, except maybe like for the gear. But we'll see how that keeps going with a little bit more time. Get a really good cast out there. And you know what, just to change up view a little bit so we're not just watching the top of the water for the entire time, let's follow as we try to retrieve this.
Now, another point I do, I will admit I like for this game is it doesn't feel like it's really uh, hard coded that. Say if you have lure A, you'll catch fish B, like how called wild the angler really was. Russian fishing four was pretty good for that too. Whereas it, you could specialize if you researched for what fish you are trying for. But even if you use like say a focused type of ground bait, like the well, good example was as we were finishing up with uh, Old Berg Lake in the last couple of episodes. I was using a carp focused ground bait, but that didn't mean it exclusively got me carp. I was getting like, uh, was it a chub? I think it was like a couple of chubs or so. There's still a variety of fish that would go for it, so it wasn't like a little almost like puzzle game in a way, where it's like piece A to piece B gives you C. So that's something I like, is there's a the little bit of variety that you can try targeting towards things, but it's not something where it's like it feels exclusively you have to, in a way. Or you'll only see certain things. Now I'll just keep bringing this in. And if nothing does strike it on this go, we will try once more and that'll be our last for today. Just because I don't want to have the videos go too long. But yeah, okay, you know what, we'll end things off with that cast there, I will just take a quick look for, oh, no, oh, actually, well, there is our thing right there, although one thing I do have to comment is the three listed species here, there is another DLC that does add a few more fish species to the game, so the reason why we're seeing, uh, oh, I can actually fast travel, you can fast travel around the lake with that, that's handy, no, but, uh, yeah, there is a DLC that does add a few more fish species, so things like the burbot, the eye, and the pumpkin seed. Those are most likely ones that are added in to that, or they're added in by that DLC. I think that one's only $3.50 Canadian, so it's cheaper than the locations, but it's, again, if you really do want it, it is there for you. Let's just go and check and see. Ooh. Oh, I forgot about skills. Every fish you catch, you gain experience. Once you get the right amount of points, character will advance next level. At each level, you get one skill point, which can be used to unlock new skills. Also, access new equipment and fisheries. Okay, this is actually something I didn't realize was in the game. There is a leveling system with perks and everything. So, reduce store costs. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. No, okay. Before I get into anything else and extend this, we're going to end the episode right here. Thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of Ultimate Fishing Simulator. If you liked the video, be sure to give a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in the comments right down below. Until I do see you all next video or episode, anglers and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy angling.